Hi guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. I'm glad to see you again, or if this is your first time here, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you have been enjoying my series of videos on Airsoft, don't forget to uh, subscribe. I'll be trying to upload a new video every week, looking at another part of Airsoft and uh, taking the guns and all sorts of things like that, having little reviews and advice and tidbits that I've picked up as I've been playing Airsoft. Today, we're going to start on looking at our first, yeah, it's like a guide really, um, looking at how to change the motor on uh, an AR pattern airsoft uh, rifle. Uh, this one here is a Vulcan Alloy series. This rifle is totally standard. I've not done anything to it. It's as it came out of the box. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, I've very fortunately managed to get hold of one of these, which is a Warhead Industries induction motor or brushless motor. Um, these seem like they're going to be very cool. Uh, I've never used one before. I'm going to try it out. Uh, and because I'm changing this into one of my rifles just to test it out, I thought I would do a little guide on how you change your motor in a, an AR pattern airsoft rifle. So, what we're going to need? Well, obviously, we have our rifle. We're going to need a screwdriver. Most of the rifles of this kind, uh, the base plate here is what we're going to need to remove. And they're usually held on with screws. Some of the newer airsoft rifles, they do come with a, a quick release base on the pistol grip, which uh, allows you to just unclip it and fold it out of the way. Uh, but the majority that I have, uh, they are similar to this. They are two screws holding the base plate in place. So you'll need a screwdriver to remove those. Next, I recommend a, a small pick or something that you can just lever the, uh, the motor terminals off with uh, their push on spade connectors on the motor. So you'll want to be able to pull those spade con connectors off. You don't want to damage the wires, you don't want to damage the connector and you don't want to tear any insulation. So if you've got something handy that can help you just to take that off without causing any damage, then that's great. So, just to have an example of how this rifle performs with the standard motor that's in it, I've got this hooked up to a 7.4 volt LiPo battery. There's no BBs in this rifle, there's no magazine in the rifle, so let's start and see how she sounds just on the 7.4 with a standard motor. Okay, I'll try a bit of full here. So that's our rate of fire trigger response on 7.4 LiPo with the standard motor. So moving on, let's change the motor out. Disconnect this battery first. To one side. Okay, so when you're changing your, your, your motor out, you've got to remember not to touch this screw here. Uh, that screw is for adjusting the motor height which in this instance, we're not wanting to touch that just now. We want to keep the motor height as is. We can go into the details of the motor height as we do it. So first things first, get your screwdriver and undo the two screws that hold the motor plate in place. Now you don't want to lose these screws, so keep them safe. Now you'll notice that I'm putting my thumb on top of the motor plate as I undo the screws. These motor plates are under pressure, so as you remove the uh, the screws that hold it in place, it is going to try and spring out. In a lot of cases, it won't always, but um, I found that they have sprung out on me before, so I don't take any chances. So keep a bit of light pressure on there with your thumb or a finger, stop the motor plate popping out, and then once both screws are out. Just let the motor pop up and remove the base plate. Now you'll notice there's a little metal disc, little metal disc on the uh, on the underside of the base plate. You don't want to lose that disc on a lot of airsoft replicas that I've taken apart. That disc is loose. Very often it'll slide down the side of the motor because the magnets. Sometimes it'll just drop down into the pistol grip. Other times it'll drop out on your workbench. 
don't lose that you need that that's what allows you to adjust the tension on the motor and not as it sprung so it can go up and down oh yeah so that's your, your motor exposed next up we want to take these off we don't want to damage them so we just pop the wires off like so okay now you don't want to get reverse polarity when you're putting your new motor in so make sure you can remember which wire goes where on a lot of very soft replicas you'll have an indication of which is which now on this one because it's silver coated wire it's difficult to see with the clear insulation however there is a small red stripe down the side of this wire which indicates positive I don't know if you can make that out on camera but th there is a, a red line on that wire that indicates positive so now we can take the motor out so that's our existing motor actually looks like a, a reasonably high quality motor um, obviously I'll keep hold of that one now for the motor that we're testing you just first of all want to make sure you, you're dealing with a similar size motor which obviously we are uh, the a long shaft motor is what you need when you're dealing with a, an AR pattern assault rifle. The long shaft enables it to go down the pistol grip into the gearbox. Other gearboxes will have a different length motor. Now you have the short shaft for version 3. So in this case we've got a long shaft motor. We removed our wires and then it's simply a case of popping the motor back in in the same pattern that it was in before it pops in like that replace your wires being very careful not to damage the motor tabs the motor tabs on these motors can be easily broken off you don't want to break off the motor tabs because you certainly will have a bad day if you do that Okay, once you're satisfied that your tabs are back on and the motor is secure, you can go ahead and put the screws back in, remembering to take up the pressure because it will be pushing back at you the base of the pistol grip because you've now got spring tension on there. Uh, we haven't altered the motor height adjustment, so hopefully that will still be effective. Okay, tighten that one up. Put your other screw in the pistol grip. The base of the pistol grip, should I say. Make sure you get those nice and tight. I don't want your motor popping out. Okay, so that is the motor changed. Now, the next thing that you might have issues with is the motor height. We've changed the motor. We haven't altered the motor height, so hopefully that shouldn't make any difference. The way to test this is to see how it sounds. Now that's that's with the new motor we're in. We're on the same 7.4 volt LiPo battery. So let's try it on semi and see how she sounds. She sounds a lot snappier. The motor height hasn't been affected. Should we try it on full auto? I think we should. So on to full auto. Well, to me, that sounds a lot better. So there we go. A small upgrade. Change the motor. Now, normally, dependent on the airsoft replica that you're dealing with, I uh, would say that you, you could cause damage if, if the internals of the gearbox aren't up to the, the challenge of, of running the rate of fire uh, that you've, you've put in place. If you've put a high-speed motor in there, for example, which this is, um, all I can say is that this Warhead Industries motor is, is, is very rapid. I mean, that has altered the rate of fire greatly just by changing that motor in. So, you know, they are very good. Um, obviously, they're more costly than a standard motor. I would normally use uh, high torque motors, but this one did get me very excited with being brushless. New technology, um, not commonly seen so brushless motor has been around for a long time in the rc world obviously but uh, in in airsoft you don't really come across them that much so i'm quite pleased with that that's good so things to remember when you're changing an airsoft replica's motor uh, specifically when you're changing the motor 
on a, a version 2 or particularly in this case an AR pattern replica you need to have a couple of screwdrivers something to take your, your spade connectors off the motor tabs undo your two screws on either side of your adjustment screw don't touch the adjustment screw keep pressure on the base remove the base make sure you don't get reverse polarity motors normally have a little red dot on the top of the positive terminal and you'll normally have a red and a black wire if you've got silver wiring like I had here you should normally have a red line down one of the wires or something to indicate which one's the positive lead don't get reverse polarity that won't do your gearbox any any favors at all once you've changed make sure to keep pressure on the top of the motor don't pinch or trap any wires keep pressure on the top of the base plates keep the motor in place fasten up your two screws and you're good to go if you have to adjust the motor height which you shouldn't if you haven't adjusted it here but if the motor is slightly different spec or slightly out of, out of uh, alignment then you, you may have to adjust it um, and all you do there is, is you wind this screw here sometimes an allen key sometimes a screw you wind it in to push the motor further in and out to bring the motor out and you want to get a nice crisp sound if you get any screeching or whining then your adjustments off if the rifle locks up all together the chances are the motor height is too high and it's too tight um, if you get a lot of whining and it's running but the rifle isn't cycling then your motor's too far out and you need to wind it in a bit um, so that that is quite simple i'll cover that in more detail when we do a bit of shimming um, in a later video on when we rebuild the gearbox because that's normally when you'll start to have to uh, mess it about with the motor height with regard to this job i'm happy with the way that's gone like i say it's a very simple job to change your motor if you want to do a quick upgrade to your ar pattern replica or any replica you can always change the motor out for a high torque or a high speed and um, you know that there will be some advantages in most cases you'll get a slight bit of trigger response you maybe get a little bit better rate of fire depending on the motor that you put in they're relatively affordable i'd say that the motor can be one of the more expensive items that you'll buy as an upgrade um as, you know so so i mean that that's that's what we're looking at there that's where you you're sitting with your with your motor so that's all done i'm happy with that job i hope it's taught you something i hope you could now quite confidently go away and change your your ar pattern airsoft replicas motor with no issues I hope you're impressed with Warhead Industries motor and the effect it's had on the rate of fire on this replica for sure. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up, give me some comments below and help me out on this uh, video journey that I'm taking. Give me some feedback and if you're enjoying my series of videos on little basic jobs that you can do, uh, equipment that you might want, reviews, that type of thing, well don't forget to subscribe and I'll aim to put a new video out with a different item in it every week, normally on a Sunday or Monday. Okay, well, thanks again. <laughs>